uh, now that we have examined all the, the separate pieces about the likelihood function or the posterior function, uh, it's time to put it all together and see how different parts fit together in the statistical analysis framework. So the analysis workflow uh, can be shown here. There are a lot of boxes here. And it's basically the same workflow that, that was done yesterday by Wei Yang. Uh, it's just <coughs> putting in boxes here. So first we pick the design points uh, in the parameter space, and we cal calculate model predictions uh, for those design points. And then we use Gaussian process emulator to interpolate the all phase space. Oops. And on the other hand, we prepare data from experiments. And the combination of these, we can write on the posterior function. And for the posterior function, we feed it into MCMC, which gives us the samples. Then we can run it. So it looks very complicated, uh, doing like this, so with so many boxes. But if we write down what each box is supposed to do, then it becomes clear. So the, the main uh, thing for the upper half is to build a posterior function, which is P of theta given x. To do this, we need the x, and we need the, the P of x given data for all points. To get this, uh, we do it on the number of points and then interpolate. And then MCMC is just a transformer to give you the samples. Okay, I hope this is more clear what each box is supposed to do. And for Jetscape, there is a statistical analysis package that you can use that package up a lot of the steps. And the GitHub, GitHub location is there. It also evolves through many, many collaborators. So it's Python based and it's quite simple to use. And uh, one advantage of this package is that uh, the input format is standardized, which I will cover in a few slides. So suppose you are trying to learn something, you have to go model, you will learn the parameters from one set of data, and your colleague sitting next to you also want to use the same data to learn the parameters for this model, then you can share the, the files. And this is uh, also more, uh, it's less error prone by doing everything by hand because it's, there's a set of files and then you can always come back and see if there's anything wrong with the file. So doing everything by hand is good if you are trying to learn things. Uh, eventually, once you learn, once you know it, well, how everything is put together, then there's also a merit to use the, the packages. So more practically, uh, if we go back to the to a diagram, the statistical, statistical analysis package basically package up all these things in the bottom. And whatever is outside the box, we have to prepare ourselves. So for data, it usually comes on experiments. Um, if you want to Propose a new analysis, it could take a while, but usually we take whatever is available and try to learn things from there. There's also the theoretical input, um, which can take a while to calculate things. And that's why we do all these things uh, that this slide before. And there's also cases where you set everything up, you do your analysis, and then you discover that the design points are not finite, that in the end, was results in stable. In that case, we may need to go back, pick more design points, calculate more predictions, and then we run things. And the uh, good news is that uh, once you get the inputs down, this part is relatively fast. So to get, get some answers, usually like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or maybe one, a couple hours if the computer is slower. So we, we can play with these settings very easily. Okay, uh, let's pause here to see if we have any questions.
Oh, I see there's a follow up. So, uh, actually, I meant the error when we include experimental data in the flow chart. Oh, okay. So, in here, um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, so you, you would, in the prepared data step, you will also put in the error and that uncertainty will be used to construct the procedure function. And, uh, Sir, uh, what I meant was uh, when, when we get the experimental data mm -hmm. and we are generating these samples, can we have a bound on uh, how much error are we producing from uh, in, in the final steps? How much sure we can be about the sampling process and uh, compared because we are using both model predictions and experimental data. So is there a method to calculate how much errors we will be producing uh, like in this samples and uh, while, while calculating the posterior function? Yeah, uh, so in general, this it's not that easy to disentangle, but in this, uh, this case, you can get an idea. So you can run the whole thing uh, with all the errors. And then, uh, Independently, you run the whole thing again, turning off the experimental error and see how much the, uh, the result differs. And this will give you an idea of how much that matters, for example. Okay, thanks. Okay, um, the next is hands on session. So, shall we take a five minute break here? So we will do uh, a simple hands-on session. And so for today, we will try to learn uh, the parameters of a simple function. And the general procedure is very similar to the past two days. And the main difference is that uh, for today, the primary goal would be to understand how to use the step package instead of uh, doing all, all the different steps uh, by hand. Uh, 